using Unix domain sockets with Apache HTTP server and Jenkins. In Jenkins LTS 2.426.2, support for Unix domain sockets or UDS was added. So what are Unix domain sockets? As we can see here from Wikipedia, a Unix domain socket or UDS is a data communications endpoint for exchanging data between processes in the key part executing on the same host operating system. So why would I want to use UDS? Well, since UDS is only available within the host operating system, we know for sure that they only execute on that host, so checks, like routing, can be avoided. This makes UDS lighter and faster than even IP sockets. So here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.2. This controller is running on Alma Linux 8. Also, I have Java 21 running the Jenkins process. Now, why Java 21? Support for UDS was added in Java 16. So from an LTS perspective, I need at least Java 17 or Java 21 in order to use UDS. Now, also on this server, I also have Apache HTTP server running. From this point forward, I'll just call it Apache. The version of Apache that's running on this server is 2.4.37. Now, because we're using Apache as our reverse proxy, we're going to be using the proxy pass directive. You'll notice from the documentation that UDS support was added in 2.4.7. So since we're running 2.4.37, we're going to be fine. So in order to use UDS at this point, I've got Java 21, I've got Jenkins LTS 2.4.26.2, and I've got Apache 2.4.37. Now let's take a look at our controller. We can see that's running on Jenkins 8080, and our Apache server, again, on the same server, but it's listening on port 80. So it's just referenced by Jenkins. So what I'm wanting to do is have the reverse proxy set up on Apache using UDS instead of using the IP sockets of 8080. So how are we going to set this up? Well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that everything is running as securely as possible. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and turn on firewall D. So let's go ahead and go over to our controller configuration. Let's verify a couple of items. First off, we're going to go ahead and double check our Apache server version. We can see it's 2.4.37. We'll go ahead and verify our Java version. We can see that's Java 21. And now we're ready to go ahead and set up our firewall D. So I'm going to become root just to make the commands a little bit easier. First off, let's go ahead and run netstat-an and let's see what's already running on the server. Now we know because we've been accessing Jenkins on 8080, we expect to see port 8080 open which we do. Now we also know that Apache is running on port 80. Now you'll notice that for 8080, we're only listening on IPv4, but in this case, we're listening on IPv6 for Apache, just on port 80. There's no other 80s listening at this point. Also notice the active Unix domain sockets. We'll be looking at this later after we make the changes. Let's go ahead and check the status of firewall D. So we'll say system CTL status firewall D. Now, because I'm on Alma Linux, which is a Fedora-based OS, Firewall D is what I'm using. If you're on a Debian-based, you're going to be using UFW. So the commands here are primarily focused on Fedora, but if you're working on Debian, you should be able to map through the commands that I'm checking out here. We can see here from status that Firewall D is not actually active. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. We'll say systemctl restart Firewall D. Let's check the status again. We can see that the firewall is up and running, but we haven't configured the firewall at all. So let's go back over to our browser. Let's refresh the page for Jenkins. We're unable to connect because there's no configuration to allow traffic through to 8080. Let's also go ahead and check Apache. When we refresh this page, we're also blocked because again, no rules have been set up inside of Firewall D. Let's go ahead and check and see how Firewall D is configured. So we'll quit out of this. Let's go ahead and run Firewall command list all. When we take a look at the services line, we notice there's no HTTP services in that line. So let's go ahead and add HTTP, and I'm also going to go ahead and add HTTPS. Now for this example, I'm not going to be using SSL, but up to those two services would be the services you would want to add. So first up, let's go ahead and add our HTTP service. And next, let's go ahead and add our HTTPS service. Now you'll notice that both of these say success, but when we run our list all again, 
you'll notice looking at services that we still don't see HTTP or HTTPS. So what we first have to do is we have to go ahead and reload the firewall configuration. So let's go ahead and run firewall command dash dash reload. That's successful. Now let's go ahead and run our list all one more time. And now in services, we can see both HTTP and HTTPS. Let's go back over to our browser. Let's go ahead and refresh our Apache tab. We can see now that we have our Apache page back, our welcome page. But if we go back over to our Jenkins page, listening on 8080, when we refresh this page, we're still blocked because we did not open 8080 inside of Firewall D. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start configuring both Jenkins and Apache. First up, we're gonna go ahead and configure Jenkins. So let's go back over into our shell. Let's first take a look at the logs for Jenkins. So I'll say journal ctl-u Jenkins. And let's go down and scroll to the right and take a look at how it is listening. What we can see from this line, started server connector on 8080. This is the line that's going to change as we move over to UDS. Let's go ahead and quit out of this. We're going to edit our configuration. So we'll say systemctl edit Jenkins. We're going to make a change to our Jenkins ops. So here at the end, I'm going to first disable the HTTP port. Right now that port is 8080. So I'll say dash dash HTTP port equals negative one. And now I'm going to add the configuration for the UDS. So I'll paste that in and it's dash dash HTTP Unix domain path and it's var run Jenkins, Jenkins.socket. Now in your case, you may not be able to use var run. You may need to put the socket somewhere else. That's up to you. In my case, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to set up the socket as we go through the configuration. Let's go ahead and save this and then restart our Jenkins configuration. What we expect out of this restart is that we're not gonna be listening on port 8080 anymore and that we'll have that UDS available to us to connect. Now, what we will see here after we restarted Jenkins is that there was a failure. Well, let's run journal ctl dash x e. And then let's go ahead and scroll up and look for the error. What we'll see here is we see a failed to start jetty. Then we see could not bind Unix domain server connector. But above that, the root is no such file or directory. Because we specified var run Jenkins Jenkins socket, that location does not exist. So we first must create that location in order for the socket to be created. Let's quit out of our log. Let's go ahead and create the directory var run Jenkins. We don't need to create Jenkins.socket, but just the directory. We also need to change the ownership on this directory. And we also need to go ahead and change the permissions. So we've created the directory, changed the ownership to match the user that's running the Jenkins service. And then we change the ownership to only be accessible by the Jenkins user. So we're locking down that directory to only the Jenkins user can get to that socket. Let's go ahead and verify what we created. So we'll say LSL var run. If we take a look here, we will see our Jenkins directory that we just created and notice the ownership is only owned by Jenkins. Permissions, everything's locked down. Now let's go ahead and restart the service. We can see here now we didn't get any errors on the restart. Let's go ahead and double check our log. So we'll say journal CTL dash U Jenkins. Let's go to the bottom and let's scroll right. So now instead of seeing 8080, what we see is started Unix domain server connector and it's pointing at var run Jenkins Jenkins socket. Also notice that there is no other listener with 8080. Let's quit out of this and let's go back over to our netstat that we ran at the very beginning. If we take a look at netstat and scroll up. What we'll notice now is there's no longer an 8080 listening on IPv4. We still have our 80 for IPv6 for Apache, but let's scroll down into the UDS section. And what we'll see now is that we have a socket set up listening for Jenkins.socket. Now, since we're no longer listening on port 8080, when we go back over to our browser and click refresh, again, we can't access it, number one, because 8080 no longer exists, but we can tell by the logs that Jenkins appears to be up and running. So now at this point, we need to configure Apache to be the reverse proxy for Jenkins. Now you might not be using Apache, you might be using HAProxy or Nginx or Caddy or many other different options. 
For this example, we're using Apache. Now, in the case that you are using Apache, I'm assuming that you understand how to use Apache as a reverse proxy. If not, there's a link to a video down in the description that goes into more details of how to do that. Now, since we're using Apache only to front Jenkins on this server, I'm taking the easy way out and adding a configuration file just for Jenkins. If you're already using Apache on this server to do other things, then your configuration will probably be different. Let's go back over into our server. Let's CD into the home directory. And in this case, it's etsy httpd conf.d. And in this directory, right now, the file that we're seeing is being served from the welcome.conf configuration. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and move that configuration, welcome.conf, to welcome.old. With that configuration change, I want to go ahead and restart HTTPD. Let's go back over to our browser. Let's refresh this test page. And what we're going to see now is just a standard HTTP server index of slash. So that means the welcome is gone. And now we're ready to go ahead and configure Apache to point at Jenkins. Let's go back into our shell. I'm going to create a new file called jenkins.conf. And inside this, I'm pasting in two lines, a proxy pass line and a proxy pass reverse. They look very similar. Now, in my case, I'm hosting the root on the server to point directly at Jenkins. So there's no prefix on Jenkins. I'm pointing it at the socket, var run Jenkins, Jenkins socket. Then I'm also piping over to localhost. Now notice with localhost, it ends in slash for both of these lines. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and restart Apache one more time. When we go back over to our browser and refresh this page, what we now get is a service unavailable. Well, what's causing this? Let's go into the error file for Apache. So we'll cd over to var log httpd. And in this case, we're going to do less error log. When we scroll down to the bottom, what we can see here is we are getting a permission denied when attempting to connect to the Unix domain socket. Now remember, we set up the user as Jenkins, so in theory, this should have worked. But let's take a look at the configuration of HTTPD. Let's quit out of this. Let's do a ps auxww and grep for HTTPD. Notice the user that's running the HTTP binary is Apache and not Jenkins. Well, since the owner of that socket is Jenkins, Apache cannot connect to that socket. Another way we can look at this is if we run httpd dash uppercase s. If we take a look at the bottom, we'll see user and group are both Apache. We expect those values actually to be Jenkins. So what we need to do is reconfigure our jenkins.conf to include a user and a group. So let's go ahead and go back over to our configuration file. And what we're going to do is we're going to add user Jenkins and group Jenkins. And let's go ahead and restart this service. So in theory, we should be good now. Let's go back over to our browser. We'll refresh it, but still we have a service unavailable. What could this be? Well, let's double check and make sure the configuration worked as we expected. So we'll say httpd dash s. We can see at the bottom, the user and group are both Jenkins. So those are correct. Let's go back over and double check our log. We'll say less var log httpd error log. Let's go to the bottom. And we'll notice here we're still getting a permission denied. Well, what we've run into now is SE Linux. At this point, the socket is unreachable because of rules within SE Linux. So we need to reconfigure our SE Linux configuration in order for this socket to connect up. Remember, we're trying to keep everything as secure as possible. So we have SE Linux enabled. We have Firewall D enabled. We have our proxy set up out front. We're trying to lock this completely down and minimize the number of IP sockets available on the machine. So in this case, we need to reconfigure SE Linux. Let's clear this out. And let's go ahead and take a look at the socket. So if we take a look at how the socket's configured, we can see that we have a var run t. That's not the exact permission that we need in order to have SE Linux allow traffic to that socket. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and run chcon dash t http sys rw content t to the socket. Now, when we run our list on that file again, now we'll see the proper permissions set up for that socket. So we don't want var run, we want HTTP sys. 
Now, if we go ahead and go back over to our browser, we don't need to restart anything. Remember, we're just changing up SE Linux. We refresh this page, and now we get our login screen for Jenkins. So we can go ahead and log in. And now we're looking at our Jenkins controller through Apache via UDS. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.